Hi hey everyone, Disturb43216 here, bringing you the next album review of my In Flames discography. Today, I'm talking about their second album, which is one of my personal favorite metal albums of all time, The Jester Race, which is one of the quintessential albums in the Gothenburg style of melodic death metal. And this is just a phenomenal album all the way through. I love every single track on here, even the bonus tracks, which I'm not going to be talking about because, like their old In Flames albums, I mean, like all the old In Flames albums, they've reissued them like a bazillion different times with all these different selections of bonus tracks. Although I do own the bonus track version, I'm just not going to be talking about the bonus tracks. I'm going to be talking about the 10 tracks on the original release, which are very, very amazing. Now, the f I'm going to talk about some of my personal favorite highlights on this album. The opener, Moonshield, has this amazing acoustic intro and some really awesome melodic riffing and all this kind of cool stuff. And that's this cool acoustic interlude in the middle. It's probably one of the best songs on the album. And there's this really cool, the second track, is this short little instrumental. It's pretty simple, but it's just really cool. It's called The Jester's Dance. It's only about two minutes long, but it has a really interesting, slow, calm, chill feel to it. It's a really interesting song. And one of my personal favorite songs from In Flames is the third track, Artifacts of the Black Rain. It just has this amazing main melodic riff that just gets stuck in your head. And it's got some really interesting lyrics and stuff like that. It's a really cool song. Another song I want to highlight is uh, The Jester Race, which is the title track. It's a sort of intro with the... It sounds a little similar to the, the instrumental Jester Stance at the beginning, but then it has some really cool riffs in it and it has a really awesome solo and it has uh, some really great lyrical content on it. Now my personal favorite track on the album is the eighth track, December Flower, which is just an amazing track all the way through. It has this sort of interesting main riff that's kind of weird that it opens up with and then, it, I mean the opening riff, and then it goes into this really cool and catchy main riff and then it has some of the best like lead guitar playing I've heard from In Flames uh, on the main melodic riff it has. And then there's this really cool solo. It's not it's recorded by uh, the solo on this album is recorded or I mean on this track is recorded by a session musician called Frederick no uh what's his name? Frederick Nordst or no, that's the producer. Frederick Johansson who is not to be confused, which he often is, with the Frederick Johansson that was the guitar player for uh, Dark Tranquility in the 90s. It's a different person, but everyone seems to get that confused. I just thought that a little interesting bit of tri trivia. But the solo is one of the best In Flames solos out there. It's just... this. I don't know how to describe it. Just go check out this track. If you're going to check out any track on this album, just check out December Flower. It's one of the best tracks from In Flames. And it has some really great lead playing on it. The last track I want to highlight is uh, the instrumental, the second to last track, Wayfarer, which is my personal favorite uh, metal instrumental of all time. It sort of has two parts. It has this sort of slow beginning part where it alternates between like sort of a kind of chuggy-ish riff, I don't know if that's the right way to describe it, and then it alternates between some soloing, and then the second half is all this really cool, happy, upbeat, like, m major key, like, happy soloing. It just sounds amazing. And it, it actually was my ringtone on my phone for a while. I loved it that much. Now, so those are the tracks I wanted to highlight. So let's uh, get into the sound of the band on the album. And because I was messing up some names last time, I went and looked up how to pronounce Swedish names so I can get these right. I'm still only going to go with the first names because the last names can be kind of hard to pronounce. But I do know the correct way to pronounce the first names now. So uh, let's get into talking about what the band's doing here. So let's talk about Jesper and Glenn on guitars. As well as... Uh, there was contrib contributions from other band members, including the new drummer Bjorn, who also contributed to the guitars, as well as some few other session musicians, which I've already talked about. But the guitar work on this album is phenomenal. It has this amazing, like, production on the guitar. It's got this, like, sort of melodic, melodic, but also, like, metallic-y sounding tuning to it. And whatever they've done with it, it just has that 
Gothenburg style that's unmistakable, but it has that crunchy but metallic sound to it that I really like. And there's some really great riffs on this album that are just memorable and some amazing solos and lead riffs that are just some of the best work from In Flames. And there's just a lot of harmonizing on the lead, so like to have two lead guitars harmonized as well as a rhythm guitar. And in a lot of places they also use uh, acoustic guitars to mix it up. But there's a lot of great and interesting guitar work on this album. It's some of the best guitar work from In Flames. Now let's talk about uh, Johan on the bass. I talked about him on the bass on their previous album, Lunar Strain. It was kind of simplistic and boring at parts. But the bass is a lot better. I can It's turned up a bit more. I can hear it. And it's doing some more interesting things, except it's not just following along with the guitars like it did on the previous album. There's a lot of parts where it's deviating from what the guitar is doing. And there's a lot of parts with uh, where it's the acoustic parts, and then the bass is doing something different from the acoustic guitars. And then there's also the electric guitar is playing and then the bass is doing its own thing. There's a lot of interesting stuff. Like on the on the track Moonshield during the acoustic interlude, the bass is doing its own different thing from the acoustic guitars. It has a nice sound to it. And then on the instrumental the Jester's Dance, it has this sort of percussive feel to it. It's not it's like keeping the beat instead of the drums. Or along with the drums instead of going along with what the guitar is doing, which is what the bass normally does. But it works for this song. It helps keep the beat for that song. And then in the song, Gra I mean, not Graveland, sorry. That's a good song too. But in the song Dead Eternity, there's a part after the intro where it's just the bass and it's turned up really loud. And I really like that they turned up the bass for that part. And let's talk about Bjorn on drums. They finally have a drummer. And he's doing a lot of interesting stuff that Jesper was doing, the, set, the session drums on the previous album, which were sort of simplistic. But Bjorn has, he's a better drummer, because he's actually a drummer. And he's, he's doing some interesting fills and all this kind of stuff to keep the, the formula mixed up a bit. And, it, and he's also doing a lot faster, there's a lot of faster drumming that wasn't on the previous album. And it comes together very nicely like the song dead eternity has a lot of really fast drumming whereas like the jester's dance has a sort of slow simple drumming but it also has some really cool fills when the song is transitioning from the clean guitar part to the like heavily distorted guitar part and also the drumming on december flower is some really cool and fast double bass, which In Flames doesn't tend to do a lot, but it really works for the December Flower song, which is, as I mentioned before, my favorite song on this album. Okay, let's talk about uh, Anders on vocals. This is the first time that they have a full-time vocalist who, he used to be the vocalist for Dark Tranquility. It's kind of funny that sort of, on the first album they had, who became Dark, Tr Dark Tranquility's vocal vocalist, and Anders used to be the Dark Tranquility's vocalist, and now he's in Flames vocalist. I just find that that's a funny thing that happened. But he's doing a lot of really nice low range growls here. It's some of the, I've noticed as as they just as they've gone from album to album, he screams higher and higher. But there's a lot of low gutturals on this album that he does, which I have, which sound different from like other artists' uh, low gutturals, but. So he has a nice, unique sound to him, although it does. It's not as I don't know. Like I don't know how to describe it, but it seems a little rough, and sometimes it doesn't even really sound like he's growling at times. But it still sounds really good in my opinion. It's not his best vocal work with them, but it is a very nice introduction of him into the fold. And he has some really great, interesting lyrics. Although, at the time, he wasn't very good at English. So he wrote the, the lyrics in Swedish initially. And then Dark Tranquility's guitarist uh, helped him translate them into English. But as they progress on, he gets better English and starts writing the lyrics in English. But anyway, the lyrics on this album are fantastic. They're dark and brooding in times, so they're sort of grim, grim outlook on the future, or like talking about death and stuff like that. 
but they're really well written lyrics for the time even though some of them are kind of corny at times but overall i really like the lyrical content on this album so that's it for the album review like i said before it's one of my favorite albums of all time and it is almost perfect in my opinion if i had to give it a rating i'd give it a 9.5 out of 10 it's not their best album but it is probably one of their it's if it's it's not the best album they've made, but it's one of the best albums they've made, and it's definitely deserving of the nine point five because it is just amazing in my opinion, and it's definitely worth checking out. This is a really good album to get to start exploring in Flames from, so do, go check it out. That's it for the review. If you like it, be sure to um, like the video and subscribe for more. I'm going to be going on through the Inflames Flames Sorry review for the next few weeks. So be sure to check those out. And I'm also going to be doing uh, some other reviews throughout the next few weeks as well and to mix it up and not just be talking about Inflames all the time. So be sure to subscribe to check out those videos. I'll see you guys next time.